what we've seen in terms of the demographic change in Japan is that we've gone from a situation in which Japan used to have about 20 workers to one retiree in the 1950s to a situation now where it's about three workers for one retiree. That has meant a huge increase in the government debt uh, as they've begun funding through bonds. It's meant a rise in inequality. It's meant a lot of reliance on part-time work for younger people. And it also tends to undermine the gender equality in the country. So uh, the likelihood of social implosion is rather high. Generally speaking, I think the Abe administration is probably uh, reasonably good at dealing with the issues of health care. Japan has a very good system. Uh, there's a very generous system of retirement benefits. On that front, I think they're doing well. Where they've been, I think, far less good is in terms of encouraging more women to enter the workforce and more particularly changing the labor laws in ways that are going to be beneficial to moving more young people into the workforce. And also I think they've been rather slow to push corporations to do more to increase their uh, productivity per capita. So in all of those ways, I think at best we've been hearing a lot of the, uh, the right sounds but not an awful lot of policy suggestions. It's interesting how an awful lot of countries that have relatively good gender equality, whether we're talking about Iceland, Norway, or Sweden, or even uh, the UK and the US to a lesser extent, what we find is that uh, women, once they have the opportunities for better health care, better care for the elderly, better care for uh, children, they are tending to go back to the workforce full time, uh, become more productive members, move into managerial positions, and simultaneously their fertility tends to go up as well. So uh, there are ways in which it is possible for significant changes in social policies to have very positive impacts on the economies of both Korea and Japan. But so far, I think we've seen a great deal of social resistance by an older male generation that's not very comfortable with the idea of moving toward uh, greater gender equality. Japanese women tend to rank somewhere in the neighborhood of uh, 95th out of 140 countries in terms of uh, gender equality. Roughly 7.5 or 8% of the uh, parliamentarians are female. And we see very, very few parliamentarians uh, moving into the cabinet if they're women. And also in the corporate area, a minuscule number of women on boards of directors. So the Abe administration has uh, put together a phrase now called womenomics to parallel Abenomics. But uh, again, I think it's been a lot more speechifying than it has been actual arm twisting to move the process forward. The one thing that Britain uh, possibly could learn from Japan is simply the fact that uh, there are a lot of policies in place that do tend to keep families more intact. There is a lot of social pressure to stay away from the single mother family, which uh, regardless of one's morality on this does tend to have a very positive effect economically if you have a two uh, family, a two parent family. Uh, but really Japan has far more to learn from Britain in terms of moving women into managerial positions, uh, moving them into the political world, uh, putting them on boards of directors, and in many ways taking full advantage of the fact that 50% of the population is, uh, is female and uh, for probably 90% of the jobs, gender differences probably are totally irrelevant. And uh, yet I think many Japanese uh, are still encrusted in their old beliefs that somehow the woman's role is that of the baby producing machine as one politician once put it. And, uh, and unfortunately, that's, uh, that's a set of social attitudes that I think are going to have to be seriously attacked.